All right, so today was a lighter day. Today, I, I woke up early to go and run. Um, this is my second run of the year. For those who haven't seen the other videos, my goal is to be able to run 10 miles um, by the end of the year. Um, never in my life have I ever ran more than like two miles at once. And so this is just a personal goal. And it's kind of a, a goal that's separate from my my strength building goals. So it's, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out because um, it's just a fact that cardio makes your body um, uh, kind of like lighter, but your, your body has to um, find out some efficient way to be able to keep your body um, intact while you're also putting stress on your joints and, and elevating your heart rate for a period of time. So it's like, I don't know exactly how it's all going to work out, but um, my goal is that when I run, that it'll be um, anywhere from from uh, anywhere in between one to four times a month. It's definitely not going to be, um, usually it's not going to be more than once, um, more than once a week, but that's just initially like um, in my headspace, I just created that plan. Um, really, we're going to have to just see how it all feels and then if I make adjustments, it'll be according to what I feel will be better for my body. So I actually went, so as I say that, I actually need to clear up that I went, this is my second run this week, but it's just due to the fact that I haven't ran in a long time. I went on a mile run, I think on on Monday, today, I forget what it is, maybe it's Thursday or Friday. Um, it's crazy how I don't even know what day it is, that's what happens when you're unemployed, but anyway. Um, I went on a run today and last time I did one mile today, I did, uh, 1.5. And so I noticed today that I, so I was pushing whatever limit of, of how I can, how much I can run while still maintaining some level of comfort. Monday I ran with virtually no problem. I like no, no problems mentally, no mental blocks. And also my breathing was fine and intact throughout the whole run. Today, I started to, literally the last quarter mile, um, I started to, like, have the, all the, the breathing issues and, like, the, um, like, just, like, the thoughts running through my head, and I, like, it's where you have to really just focus in and, and finish it out, and, but I could tell that from that run that, that I can't do that more than, um, once a week, at least at this point, maybe that'll be different in the future, because my body has a certain energy reserve, and I, I need that for strength building, so, I wanted to keep it moderate with the running and 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 because I just went on a run I also want to make it um easier on my body for strength building so um I I I'm, I kind of dibble dabbled in both they didn't go didn't go hard running and didn't go heavy lifting but anyway I'll keep you guys updated as to how the running goes um basically it's one of those things I'm just going to have to do it and it it's only the only thing is it's up to me um if I want to continue or not just because I'm not filming it. So it's like at any point I could just stop doing it, but I'm going to keep myself accountable as best as I can. And hopefully by the end of the year, I'm running at least 10 miles. Um, anyway, so here I'm um, warming up for just some back squats. My only goal was to do, um, I really need to start calculating stuff and like writing it down. But basically I figure without having actually attempted I figure my max squat is going to be around 230 or maybe a little bit heavier. And so today I wanted to do 60, anywhere in between 60 to 70%, closer to 60% of that max and do it for 10 reps. That's literally my only goal for this workout. Um, this is kind of a deloading day because I think this is my fourth day in a row, which is kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting to, to do this, um, have this, this frequency. And we'll see what effect it has on my body. I, I, I'm just doing it basically for that, for the reason of having some sort of basis in the future to see how well my body holds up to such consistent training, especially as I've mentioned in the last couple of videos that I'm not eating as much as I should. Um, I've been looking for jobs and stuff like that because I need to, it's important to me that I pay for my own nutrition, that I don't um, rely on other people because um, it's not going to be able to, I'm not going to have that luxury basically for, for my whole life. So it's time for me to support myself. And so as soon as I get a job, I'll be eating and all that stuff. And my workload is going to increase. Um, right now I'm just doing enough to keep, to treat my body well and to keep it in its rhythm. So that's my only focus right now. Anyway. And one other thing I tried to experiment with today 
is that I was go- like so my plan was to do back squats and then do some bar loading or pin squats, whatever you want to call it. And one thing I've heard, and this is from Ivan Jiric, who I mentioned before, he's the guy that kind of gave me the inspiration to film this way and record videos like this. It's I V A N D J U R I C, and he's he's a squat king. Basically, he, his program is squat every day, and he's been doing it for several years. Um, basically, what he mentioned one time that that makes a ton of sense, makes the whole world of sense to me, is that if you want to test where your baseline is so obviously we want to see what's our max but if you also want to see um what's like the bottom end of your of your capability or like where your limits are i don't know if that makes sense but anyway you look at your lift whatever you're trying to um improve and increase and you if you if you're if you're trying to figure out what are the strongest components and the weakest components of that lift um you attack the strong parts of your body before you go into the lift and so if you um for example if your theory is that that your quads are extremely important while you're squatting um what you're going to do is you're going to blast your quads and then you go into the lift and if your performance is is affected and if it feels heavier and harder to do and your your performance is decreased that's a sure way to prove that the quads were in fact a dominant part of the lift because if you attack a part of your body that's not that involved the dominant part of your body can make up for the the difference but if you attack the dominant part first and allow um the weak muscles to have to struggle then your whole system is going to struggle as a whole so anyway i i kind of did that in reverse like not for the squat but for the pin squat um i'm trying to build more strength in my body so i figured the best way to do that is to make myself slightly weaker before i go into the heavy like the the squatting today was light but the pin squat was was the heavier part of my workout so i used the squat and i did some higher volume obviously like it's not that much if you compare it to i don't know other people you see that that are more experienced but i'm just starting out and also my energy reserve is kind of depleted at this point so i blasted out some air squats um got my calves to start burning um and and my calves my my quads i mean um got them pumped up they're on fire and then I, i just kept repping out squats And I get to the top two sets and it was a little bit heavier than I was anticipating. So I only did five sets or no, five reps for each set for two, two sets. That was the 10 reps I was going for. And then I moved into the pin squat and sure enough, my, my body was a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit compromised, a little bit weaker than normal, but nothing, nothing dangerous, just a little bit of fatigue. And I think it'll help in the long run. So anyway, that's a, that's my update as to now, um, if you want to go back and watch my other videos, you'll get more context and more um, more of an idea of where I'm going and where I've come from. And hopefully you can, through my progress, that hopefully is noticeable and measurable. You'll be able to um, learn some things. Basically, um, I'm just trying to do what, what I think we all should do, but I'm doing it so that um, people who don't know how to get started, so they can, I, I'm hoping that they can watch me and just get an idea of how to start. Because really, I'm just a, I'm I'm a, at novice level basically. Like I'm not I'm not doing anything special, and I'm still learning about how all this works. So, anyway, now I want to transition into the kind of like the message I wanted to share today. Um, as often as I can, I'll I won't only be talking about fitness. I'll also be talking about just things that, about life in general. Um, I also got this idea from Ivan Jiric. Um, but this is my main motivation for creating YouTube videos is that I want to share my message that I have, like my thoughts and my, my feelings and whatever, all the things I've learned in my life, I want to share that. And I figure fitness is a way to attract the general population because everyone should have goals to become more fit, but also everyone should have goals to increase and, and become more wise and to make better decisions overall in their life. So Today, I want to talk about my perspective on why I think marriages suffer, especially in Western culture and in America. So first, I'll start off by just like my, I'm just going to postulate. Is that the word? I'm just going to like put out my my theory. But basically, my opinion is that it's not hard at all to identify a problem. Most people are very adept at it and are very keen um, to notice things that are wrong. A problem that is happening, I think, in general, in our population, um, in our society, 
is that Satan is trying to influence us to the point where we might not even notice that a problem is occurring or may not recognize the severity. Whereas naturally, um, everyone has the ability to recognize a problem. And the, the, the part that's difficult is that um, while it's easy to identify a problem, it's not so easy to identify the root cause or even harder is to find the right solution to fix it. And so that's why we see a lot of issues today in our political climate of not knowing exactly how to proceed and how to act. While we may be able to identify problems, we're disagreeing as to why the problems are happening and we're disagreeing as to how to solve the problems. And it's even gone past that point, like I said, where people are starting to lose the ability to identify issues that are going on. And we're, we're being made to focus on issues that are less important than what's, what's really going on. And so I'd say one of the most alarming um, problems in our society is the fact that most marriages are ending in divorce. And, and by that token, also um, a majority of relationships do not work out. And I'd say the relationships one is more severe, but it's like it's harder to track that since relationships are not documented um, and are not recorded in the census or in the government. So it's like it's hard to track statistics on that one. But I think it's a for sure thing that um, that the statistics on dating would be a lot worse than marriage. But anyway, we're going to focus on marriage and I'm going to hopefully hopefully be able to make the connections that will help us understand the whole relationship game as a whole. So, first of all, I need to just, this is just my way of doing it, but I need to lay a whole background context as to why marriage is important and, like, what it really means. So, marriage, contrary to popular belief, is a construct of um, of unity between two families. So, people tend to think of it in our Western culture as two people coming together and creating, like, a, a life and maybe a family. Um, and that's where, like, we we confuse the difference between any normal relationship like just dating and and marriage marriage is a a little bit of a step up from what we normally think of it as marriage is a whole community issue it's not just you and your and your spouse it's literally all your family both your families everyone in those families and your your neighbors your your friends all these people while they can't make choices for you, your choices kind of affect how, like everyone in the community has a responsibility to uphold um, like a certain standard. And by that standard, the whole community can prosper. So the idea um, of a marriage is that it's kind of like a, a sign of goodwill between two families that because um, like my son and your daughter or your daughter and my son or however it goes, because they're joining together, our families are now connected. And and anyway, so traditionally, it's it's absolutely unacceptable to break that bond and to end that marriage. Um, what's happening today is that it's become more acceptable, and because everything is more lenient and um, and forgiving, people are now ending marriages, um, basically off of their what's the, it's like on a whimsical whatever, basically like just because they feel like it. I know, and I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, uh, ignore the fact that a lot of, um, relationships end because of, um, abuse and whatever, but it's statistically proven, you can look this up, that the majority of, um, or not the majority, but, like, I think the, the leading cause of divorce is just, like, a loss of respect between one couple, or no, one spouse and the other, or just, like, one partner to the other. And the number one leading reason for that is financial issues. And then there's other reasons too. Infidelity is among the top reasons, but it's not one, number one. And it might not even be number two. It's just like, it depends on which poll you're looking at, which which um, re- um, which research you're looking at. All that stuff is kind of subjective. Like it depends on who they're interviewing and, and all that stuff. And the questions they ask, what's the population they're interviewing? So it's like, it's hard to get an, an actual um an actual like read on that but the the issue of of the divorce happening is is undeniable basically the results um the results of research and 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 statistics show that um a little bit less than 50 percent of first marriages end in divorce and with each subsequent marriage after that the rate of divorce goes up dramatically so there's like 50 percent for first rate or for no 50 percent rate for first marriages for a second marriage, it's about 60 something percent and then it goes 75 percent and basically up up until it's like almost a guarantee that by the fifth, fourth or fifth marriage that you're just going to end in divorce. 
at that point, like I said, you're just having a relationship. You're not actually, it's not, it's not a real marriage in my mind. Although it might be in, in like in legisla- legislation, it might be like a, a marriage. It's not a real one. Um, another point to realize is that marriage outside of a religious context doesn't really make a ton of sense unless it's for this, like this communal, um, like this bringing together of two families. Um, but all that is from, it comes from a religious context. I think we have to understand. So it's like, if you're not religious and you want to be with someone, understand that, um, you probably don't have enough of a reason to be with them to start a marriage but you do have you like you're probably just aiming for a relationship and that relationship is probably going to end i would not advise like having a relationship that you don't want to end in marriage but it's all like it's all your choice you can do whatever you want um anyway so now that hopefully that explains what marriage is marriage is just to bring two families together and create children that will be productive members of society and it's like a duty and responsibility that you have and you sign a contract basically and that's that's your life that's your rest of your life although it's going to like it's going to be um happy at sometimes it's also going to be sad and miserable at other times but that's just life and you have to learn to live with it but also to overcome it um i'll give an analogy at the end that i hope will make sense as to uh why it is that marriage is so important for development and growth so you can't expect that once you get married that all your problems are going to go away or that they're going to be solved. Uh, almost to the opposite effect is that some new problems might arise, but it's like because you have a partner you can work with, you learn how to overcome those things together. Anyway, so another statistic, and this, I'm not going to say much more than just the, what the number is, but um, around 70% of all marriages that end in divorce, the divorce is initiated by women. And like I said, the main reasons are not for um, domestic abuse, violence, or for um, infidelity. Um, A lot of times the marriage is ended because um, one person or the other is not happy. And and seven out of ten times that person is most likely going to be the woman in in the relationship. And I can't speak as to what are all the reasons that are like all the possible reasons for that. Um every relationship has its has its um course and path that it needs to take but if i could say one thing this is just my hypothesis but just due to the fact that women are more emotional um they also are a lot more invested i guess in the the feeling part of the relationship whereas men are more concerned about providing and protecting and ensuring quality of uh, of life so a woman regardless of of like of who she's with um even before she's even in a relationship a woman will likely have fantasized and um dreamt of what her family situation or relationship situation would be like in the future and so she has these certain expectations and what has happened this is just my guess is that due to the creation of media social media but also just like movies and tv shows um, there's a lot of false expectations and a false perception of what relationships are going to look like and what the outcome will be. And so if you look back, I actually made another video of called, it's called deep thoughts of, um, to whatever, what's it called, um, safe dating strategy, I think. But I talk about how Satan uses false images and mirages basically, but he'll, he'll tempt us by giving us an image of what perfection would look like. But it's really something that that he created to distract us um, from being from having an impact, basically, and doing God's will and and making a a good, positive impact on our community. Um, What happens is that we're taught in our society today that if you're not happy, that it's um, that something is wrong, that you made a mistake or that you're that someone else is doing something to unjustly to heart to put you in harm's way. So it's like basically the saying is like, girl, like if you're not happy, then then leave the relationship. Girl, if you're not happy, then do this, do that. And it's almost like people that don't care about your relationship are telling you what to do and you kind of buy into it. Like what does another person have to do with your relationship with another person? Um, Everyone should be the master of their own fate, of their own destiny, I think, and have control over what they do. And too often, um, I think it's 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 common Again, these are just all my thoughts. Like I already gave the, the facts and the and the statistics. My opinion is that too often we take advice 
from people who have not had the success themselves. Um, and although their advice could be valuable because they have made mistakes, you also um, have to realize that they don't, they might not know the the whole truth about what it takes on, on like the positive side, basically, of like having the success. They might have seen the negative and they might be able to tell you about the negative, but for someone to teach you about the positive of relationships and marriage, you, that advice has to come from someone that's, that's living that life. That's at least my opinion. I think a lot of times people hear things from people um, that basically that their dream never worked out and so they're telling you about how yours might not either and so just in general that idea of taking advice from someone that hasn't done it themselves is not the best idea but but i think the best is to take advice from or not take advice to listen to everyone's counsel to everyone's ideas and you make your decision anyway so that's although like i will say though that um well, it's all. It's just due to when I, every time I say society, I want you guys to realize that I'm mentioning society, but I'm really meaning that Satan is influencing everyone in society at once by telling us all the same lies. I think society has beat men into submission to some point, um, and also women as well. But like, um, men do not behave in the in the the same way that um, that they did back in the in the time when marriages were successful. So not all i'm not saying like it's not necessarily meaning infidelity um i do think that it's a very high likelihood that um any person that doesn't have a strong reason to maintain their relationship i think anyone in that situation is going to most likely cheat when given the opportunity to be um un, like disloyal to their partner but i think a lot of men are doing things and acting in a way that that kind of loses that where their woman loses respect for them in in small ways one way or another um as to whether or not that's justified it depends on each relationship but i think a lot of times men are acting in a way that um that a woman is able to pick them apart and and realize that 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 um that some qualities and traits about the man they're with are are undesirable um, and anyway, I don't think this is enough of a reason to end the relationship, but I think this is the reason why a lot of divorces are happening. It's like, once a woman loses respect for a man, there is no love left. Um, I think there can be things done. There's obviously like counseling, whatever, but, um, the biggest problem is that in our society today, people seem to not want to take accountability for their own actions. And, <clears throat> and that's men and women alike. Um, when something goes wrong, it's super easy to blame another person when really, um, if you had done something better, the outcome would have been different. I'm not saying it would have been fixed, but it could have been different, perhaps better. And so this is my analogy as to how marriages work and why they're so important to finish this off. Basically, this idea comes from Second Nephi chapter 2 in the Book of Mormon, but it also has to do with particle physics. So... Um, the idea is that there is opposition in all things. Where there's a good, there's a bad. Where there's a positive, there's a negative. And that's not just like a philosophical um, notion that's like that's backed up by literal science. There's positives and negatives as two um, forces, like as in atoms, get closer and closer to each other. The force um, that there's two different, there's different kinds of forces. There's attra attractive forces and repulsive forces. But... There are forces that will push two atoms apart, and that force will only increase exponentially as the two get closer and closer to each other. And so what happens in marriage is that you take, um, they're not necessarily polar opposites, but you take a man and a woman who are both very different personalities, very different people, and you, and you, ma you make them to get closer and closer to each other, and the commandment in the Bible is that they become one flesh. Um, and so basically that's become one unit and so as one gets closer to the other a lot of repulsive forces will start to manifest themselves a lot of things will make it difficult for the for that to happen that um that closeness to occur and the key to marriage is to figure out how to get past those obstacles and continue to grow closer to each other throughout time and throughout eternity um i don't know how long it's supposed to take but at some point you and your wife you and your husband are meant to become one complete unit and the only way to accomplish that is by overcoming the most powerful um opposition which is basically each other 
that's that's the key is that imagine that you have certain goals and aspirations in life and of course there's going to be people that tell you that it's not going to work it's not going to happen the way you want it to but what's easier what to listen to haters that don't know anything about you or to receive opposition from the very person that you love the most in this life and i think the answer is clear i think it's like when when you meet opposition from someone that's important to you, it creates the the biggest conflict that I, I think could possibly exist. It's easy to ignore someone that, that you know doesn't know you, that doesn't care about you. But when someone close to you provides opposition is when life gets hard. And so when it comes to marriage, you'll never be closer to anyone in this life than you are to your spouse if you do things right. But what happens is that people... Like I talked about a mirage, people might have a false expectation of what marriage is supposed to be like. And so as soon as it's not happily ever after, at the first sign of trouble, people are willing to have doubts. And after a few um, instances, or maybe a few years, um, who knows how long, people then decide to end it. And a lot of times, it just happens to be women. So hopefully this message gets to whoever needs to hear it that basically you can't expect everything in life to be peachy to be flowers and sunshine in fact if you read first nephi chapter 8 um it talks about the tree of life and how the path to the tree of life is straight it's narrow but it has an iron rod that you can hold on to but on the path are mists of darkness that are not sent from god the tree is god's love and his light and if you get there you can eat the fruit and you can feel joy but in the path, the devil has created mists of darkness that will confuse you and distract you and scare you. Um, I imagine there's a lot of other factors that maybe it's colder, maybe it's like it's miserable. But anyway, to see darkness and to see obstacles in your path means nothing else besides that you are going in the right way. It all depends on how you feel. Like if you if you can still feel that you're, um, that God is in the direction you're going then you got to press forward. If you feel emptiness and darkness, um, and and you know you've made mistakes, you got to turn back. It's all about that iron rod, and that iron rod is the, the scriptures and the word of God. So if you can still sense God in your life, and you can and you know that you're doing everything right based on what you've been taught in in scriptures and and by everything good, that um, you can know that the only only thing you, that's left is just to keep going forward. So. Anyway, don't run at the first sign of trouble, but analyze it, pray to God for help, plead with him to help you, and it should all work out. And this is my message today. I think it's really important, and I think most people are are kind of a little bit um, ignorant to this subject, and people don't spend enough time thinking about it. So anyway, that is it. I'm signing off.